Hey there, we're coding Christina and we're building a box truck into the ultimate DIY expedition rig. Last week we installed our pneumatic cooling air conditioner and 1300 watt solar array. This week we got to work creating a beautiful floor in the camper, putting up ceiling boards and wiring overhead lights. Enjoy! Hey everyone, it's a new day on the build and this week we're going to be getting started on the interior of our build. Finally, we've been waiting for a sunny day to start on our floor. So the floors that came in the truck are nice, thick, hardwood planks. So the plan is, is to use the floors we have and there are expansion gaps and screw holes in the surface of the floor right now. So job number one is gonna be sealing that up. Then we're gonna figure out what color we want to stain the floor because it's a little light for our taste right now. Now that we cleaned up the floor, vacuumed and wiped everything down, it's time to mix our epoxy together. So it's pretty simple. We have two bottles here and there's an A and a B. For the A and B mixture mentioned, you're supposed to mix them half and half. A is the epoxy, B is the hardener so that it can solidify itself. We just purchased some cheap plastic containers to mix everything together. Here you can see the expansion gaps on the surface of the wood as well as the screw holes. We poured the mixture being careful not to have excess run all over the floor. Honestly, it was a very tedious task that took a lot longer to complete than we expected, but we got it done and we did it right. Thankfully, it was a really warm day to let the epoxy dry up once we were done. Now that the uh, floor is drying up, we actually got in two coats today, which was really nice. For the first time in a while, we got some sun in. We're gonna start working on putting up some furring strips for our ceiling. So we're gonna do it the same way we did in the van. These one by three furring strips straight from the hardware store. Probably gonna do five screws per rib. And then on top of having these screwed into our ceiling studs, we're gonna put a bead of glue all the way down the board as well. So the furring strips, they're one by three by 96. Our measurement is 90 and a half inches east to west. So we need to mark that off, cut all of them down so that they're all the same length. This top board here is the one that we already did, tested, made sure all of our measurements and holes were good. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this as our sample board and we're gonna clamp this one to all the other boards and then pre-drill some small holes into each board so that we know where our holes are. And here we go. We used a Loctite premium construction adhesive to put a bead of glue along the back side of the furring strip, lined up each ends of the furring strips and got to screwing them in. The self-tapping hex head screws did their job very well. A few of them were really tough to get in, but once they started to penetrate the steel roof studs, they had no problem sucking the furring strip straight up to the ceiling, creating a great bond. Just make sure your screws are long enough to get through all of your material. Don't pay attention to the missing insulation here. We may have had some really big wind gusts come through that caused some of it to fall down. As you guys just saw, we finished up all the furring strips. That's what our shiplap boards are gonna be attaching to. But before we do that, we have to send all the wire through the ceiling and such for our overhead lights, our max air fan, and our Nomadic 3000 air conditioner. Thanks to our friends at Explorus.life. I'm sure you guys have seen them on YouTube doing installs on electrical systems, everything. They have one of the best channels out there. We're going to be working with them on our entire electrical system. So that's wiring kits, lugs, everything, Victron components, which you guys will see more of as we get closer to our electrical system because we're gonna be doing a full system install video for you guys. But today we're gonna to be using their 12 volt puck light branch circuit. Literally, you could go to their website, buy the X amount of feet length that you need. And they also have wiring diagrams for how to put all of your lights together, which can be kind of confusing if you've never done it before. So for our Explorer Sly 12 volt puck light wiring kit, we have our 16 gauge wire. We got about 60 feet of it. We also have all of our little wire levers in here, and these are the WAGO connectors. So these are the little WAGO lever nuts that we're gonna be using throughout the build. This one has three connectors, as you can see. This is our two zone 12 volt light dimmer. This is what we used in the van. We absolutely love it. The cool thing is, is when you slide them all the way down, they snap into place, and that shuts them off. You don't need a separate on off switch. And then again, what we did in the van, we had eight lights in total. So we had four on one slide, four on the other slide. And then these are our Seago 12 volt puck lights, same ones we used in the van. They're at about 3200 on the temperature scale, so they're a slight warm. We really like them and they're super easy to install. Alrighty, so this is where we're gonna be starting from. This is the front of our queen size bed that's gonna be going east, west in the truck. The entry door is gonna be right here. So we're gonna have our first light dimmer sitting on the face of our bed, somewhere right in here. And that's so that when we're getting into the truck, we're able to turn lights on and we're able to adjust the lights from bed since we're gonna be sleeping right here. So I'm just gonna start with my wire spool down here. 
and we're going to run it up to the top of the ceiling here along this beam. Now what we're going to do is hook up our first lever nut to the wire that's running up into the ceiling. So the one that's up in the ceiling, we're going to use a three-way connector. I'll show you why. So I got my small gauge wire stripper here and I'm just pulling some of the end off here. With my 16 gauge wire stripped, I'm going to put this one in the center because we're going to have wires going off the left side and the right side. And literally, all you do is slide it in, make sure it's in there nice and tight, snap it closed, you can give it a pull. With the lever nuts on, this is what it looks like. These things are really strong. They're not going to rattle loose and open up like some of the wire nuts that people would use in homes. Next up, we're going to be taking this up to the ceiling, and then we're going to hook up our first string of lights that are above me. With these lights, red is positive, black, red's negative. I just need to make sure I do that with the corresponding lever nut. Same process of just sliding it all in. Alrighty, so we have our first string of overhead lights. This is roughly the spacing we're going to be looking at. They're going to be like here and here. But I wanted to explain how we're using the lever nuts and how all the wires are tying together. So down here, this is one side of our dimmer. So this is basically our power supply line, power coming into the dimmer. This is on the output side of the dimmer. Runs up the wall to our first set of three-way lever nuts. Now we're using two slots right now. One slot taken by the power supply from the dimmer. Then the second slot is power supply over to our lights. It runs along here and then it comes over to our first light. We used a three-way at this first light because we have power coming in, the light being plugged in, and then the third wire is what's running over to our second light in this front row. So this runs across and then we have a two-way lever nut, one for the light to plug in and one for the power supply coming from this light over to this last light. Alrighty, so now we have our third and fourth light or second row of two lights. So you guys already saw light the wire coming from the dimmer up to our first lever nut, which has three slots. And then you already saw the first string of lights. This is why we used the three-way lever nut. We were able to add another line from our three-way lever nut over to our second row of lights. And then yet again, at this first light in the string here, we used a three-way, so we have the power line coming in, light going to the second slot, and then the third slot is the wire bringing power over to our fourth light or second light in this row of string. And then same thing, use the two-way lever nut, wire from the light in, and then wire from light one coming in, bringing power to this light. And these four are gonna be on their own dimmer, and now what we need to do is run our second power supply cable from the second light dimmer zone to our rear four lights. It takes a little time to get the wiring figured out for these overhead lights, but do not stress, read over the diagrams a couple times. I remember the first time I did this, it took me a couple tries to figure it out, but once I did, it was pretty simple. This is one of those things where there are many ways to do it, and I think this is one of the simplest ways you possibly can do it. Finally, we're gonna be doing something that actually makes the truck look nice. Now that we have wired our overhead lights, put the furring strips up, put the insulation up, it is time to put our shiplap boards up. These are 12 foot boards, so they almost run the full ceiling. We have already kind of measured out all of our studs in the truck. So as you guys saw, we have furring strips in the truck. All of our screw holes need to line up with said furring strips. So what we did was we lined our board up and then we actually traced where our first stud was. Once we had that first stud on our board, we went into the box and we took measurements of where all of the other studs were, came onto our board and we actually drew out where all the studs are and that's what these lines are is they're the center points of all of our furring strips so as you come down the board we have stud one screw point stud two screw point all the way down the way so we have 11 studs in the truck which means we have 11 points of screwing each plank in did you just kick a ball into my foot rose <laughs> what we're actually going to do is we don't want to see the screws everywhere obviously and we're not going to nail these in i just don't think nails are a good idea in a vibrating truck for the next 20 years or however long this thing lasts. So what we're gonna do is of these 11 studs that we're screwing into, only four of these rows are gonna be exposed screws in the ceiling. And then the rest of them, we're going to countersink holes into these boards, put the screws in, and then once they're up on the ceiling, we're actually gonna wood fill over the holes, sand it down a few times, however many times it takes to make a smooth surface. And then we're gonna paint the boards. This board here on the right is our template board. As you can see, here's our stud points and our screw locations. So what we've been doing is lining up our template board with our fresh boards, clamping them together. 
and then we're just drilling all the holes through the original template board. We are always using this board because it, let's say we used board number three down the road that has holes in it. It could be slightly different than this and it will alter all of our screw points. She took it. Okay. <laughs> We need to go through and use our Fostner bit. It's just a wide rounded bit to countersink all of the holes that are going to be wood filled. We need to be 100%. <sighs> okay. The thickness, Let's everything. Let's do it. Board number one. Let's test it. That looks pretty dialed for me. What about for you? Where's your first line? That's lines? it. Your, mm, Money. One and two is good? Yeah. For and sure. And this gap right here is beautiful. I'm ready. It's seriously so nerve-wracking putting that first board up. It literally can make or break your ceiling. If it's a little crooked or off to the side, all of the other boards will follow. So take the time, measure a million times, and be absolutely certain it's straight. With the first board done, the rest are smooth sailing. It's honestly a super fun process once you get it going. You're finally making your empty shell look like something nice. Alrighty, so it's <laughs> finally feels like we're actually doing something. But well, we got our first four ceiling boards in, as y'all saw. And now we're at our first row of lights. So this next board is gonna have all four puck lights on the same board centered in the board. So we have one, two, three, four lights on this one board here. After finding exactly where we wanted the light location to be, we pre-drilled some holes to get our hole saw going and then just let it rip. Now we're gonna put the board up, pull our wires through, screw it into place, put the lights in. Quick note, these are countersunk screws that will be wood filled over. We got our first light plank in. So we're gonna have this row here that has four lights and then the other one's gonna be over here. So satisfying installing the lights into the ceiling. Just make sure you don't pinch or snag any of the wires as you put the lights into the ceiling itself and watch out for those spring clips on the lights. They're really strong and I've had a couple snap back at my fingers. You can also see we wrapped the wires in braided wire loom. We actually had to cut a little material off the ceiling planks that fit around our AC and fan. This way the trim plates had a clean finish around the cuts and it looked pro. All right, so we're making some serious moves. We're almost ready to put our last board in by the air conditioner, which means we need to loom the two gauge wire coming from the AC. So we got some one inch braided wire loom. Unfortunately, the pine shiplap planks we used were only 12 feet long. The ceiling of the box is 14 feet long, so we needed a short segment of boards at the very back of the truck. But no worries, it won't be super visible because of cabinets. New day here on the build. We are ready to finally trim out our Max Air fan. Trim flange, trim ring, whatever you want to call it that comes with the Max Air fan. But basically, you need to slide it up into your roof. And then once it's in your roof, you need to trace where your ceiling comes down to on the trim ring. This is where the ceiling is and this is where the top of the fan flange sits in the fan. So this roughly two and a half inches for us is how much material we need to cut off of the fan flange. But you do not want to cut on this line right now. Why? Because if you cut this height off, you're going to have a gap up in your ceiling. For us, this is two and a half inches. So what we need to do is measure two and a half inches from the base of the fan going two and a half inches up. That's what this dotted line is for us and that is where we need to cut. To start the jigsaw cut, I just drilled a pilot hole with a bit large enough to slide the jigsaw bit into. Just cut along our line. So we checked the fitment of our fan flange now that we cut it, came out beautifully. So uh, we're ready to wire and then install everything. And we just put some wire loom on this wire uh, since it's gonna be tucked up here in the ceiling. And I am gonna leave these long just because it's really easy to service them when they're this long. If we ever have any issue, if we ever need a new circuit board, stuff like that. So we already have the 12 gauge duplex wire running from where our electrical system will be in the back of the van. We're not gonna put any loom or anything on this one because it is duplex, so there's the exterior white sheath, and then each positive and negative also has its own insulating jacket around the wire. And then we're just using some two slot lever nuts. The only thing to note is the black wire on these Max Air fans is the positive, the white is the negative. So we got our duplex wire coming from our electrical panel that'll be in the back. We have the wire coming from the fan. Negative going in is black from our wire. The negative going in from the fan is white. 
the positive from our wire going in is red the positive from the fan is black so you just got to be super duper careful all right now that our wires are all taped up and connected and such i'm gonna stuff it up in the ceiling this always feels like a massive step seeing the fan flange go in it's a sign of what's to come as you start trimming out and covering up the ugly bits of the build We have our trim ring in officially. The one tricky thing that we had to think about before we did everything else was, as you can see, this light over here is one, two planks over from the fan. This light's only one plank over from the fan, and that is because our shower is actually going to be coming out to about the middle of the second board. So they're not symmetrical. Again, this one's in the second, this one's in the first, but we knew we still needed to have a light here. So we had to make sure that the light fit even with the fan flange. Thankfully, it does. and. That's that with the fan.